So I want to pass it over first to uh, CA, who's going to have a look at 360 and Street View, which is, I should say, uh, the Google Street View. It's part of that Google DMO partnership program, but of course there's 360 more broadly. He's also going to look at what's new in Maps. So over to you, CA. Thanks, Chris. So we'll start by taking a look uh, at Street View here. I just wanted to make sure that we were clarifying kind of what the components of Street View are. So there's really two types of content that fall under that bucket of Street View. There is an individual image, so one 360 image, which is sometimes called a photosphere. Those can also be connected into virtual tours and things. Those images can be added directly to maps, but they are often best used when they are added to a map listing. So if you have a business or a park or any kind of map listing, you can add those 360 photospheres directly to that to help consumers understand and travelers understand what that place would look like if they were going to go in there. That kind of street view falls under street view content, but those individual images are a little bit different than what we think of, I think, more traditionally as street view. And, uh, and that's driving street view where we're actually putting a camera on top of a car and driving through some destination and then uploading that content to maps. So that footage gets added directly to maps itself and not to individual businesses um, and allows the user to, to move around much more freely in the, the destination. So those are two different kinds of things that we're talking about when we talk about street view. Most of the rest of the stuff I'm gonna reference here has to do with that driving type of street view, which is more of the the, uh, the traditional but a little bit harder to do um, type of content. So I think we can all agree that street view is an important tool for visitors, um, especially when they're planning and thinking about where they're going to go. You can see this is a, a really beautiful image from, um, from Bermuda. Uh, so street view is an important tool for those visitors to understand kind of where they're going. It's also really important for business owners and it's important for destinations that they're giving a good impression when people are making those planning decisions. So there's a visual part of this where visitors are making decisions and they're looking at it and they're saying, does this look like a place that we want to go? But there's also an informational layer that is underneath that where Google is increasingly using this street view data to do all kinds of things. So uh, the... Uh, Whoops, my apologies, let me just go back one real quickly. Um, the uh, Google is increasingly using this stuff to do things like fix directions and find out when roads are closed or when they turn into one ways. Just in the Bermuda, so if you're familiar with the Bermuda shoot that we did last year, we shot uh, pretty much the entire island with brand new street view. So just that footage alone generated 100 new businesses that were added to maps that weren't on there before. And those were all added on the back end. Uh, by Google servers looking at that street view data and updating it and saying, hey, there's a business here that we didn't know about. We ought to, we, we ought to add that. So there's some really compelling kind of back end reasons aside from the front end reasons of thinking about street view for destinations to, uh, to invest in, uh, in street view um, in various places. And so just some of the examples of things we obviously talked about driving. That's one of the most basic examples. We put a camera on top of a car and this is the, you know, the one that's going to most benefit navigation and things like that. There's all kinds of other interesting things that we can do with that same driving street view approach where we put a camera on top of a backpack and we have someone either hiking or walking or biking. So we recently finished a five county shoot in Florida that did some pretty extensive beaches and, and uh, hiking paths and biking and things like that. So some pretty interesting things you can do there. And then we even did boating. So uh, there's a bunch of different waterways um, in, in Florida that are being added. And, and uh, that's a whole other thing to kind of think about in terms of that driving street view is putting that camera on top of a, uh, a car. The two primary things you want to think about as a destination, what are, my, what are the uses for street view? Where do I need to be thinking about street view? The, the number one, of course, is where there isn't any. So adding street view where there isn't any street view at all. This is an image from the Cook Islands is not one that, uh, that we did, um, but uh, destination put together a, a package to be able to capture street view for that destination. So that's really powerful to have a place that wasn't on, uh, on street view at all and then suddenly have all of that. But then it's also important to think about the places where we can uh, update inaccurate information 
so old or inaccurate street view. Um, so this is uh, from, from Puerto Rico. This is actually a hotel in Puerto Rico. And there's sort of this impression that that might be related to, to the hurricane. And it's not. That was actually a renovation. And it had nothing to do with the hurricane at all. And I'm sure you can find in your destination when you look around that there are places where you know buildings have been renovated or streets are changed or things are going on when the car comes through that might benefit from you taking control of that street view as the destination and then, uh, and then updating that information. So lots of things to think about in terms of how you might use it in your destination. The uh, equipment gets better and, uh, and more accessible. Every year that goes by, we're really only talking about 18 months since users were allowed to upload uh, this kind of footage to begin with, but already we have a second version of the Insta360 camera, which is quite good. Uh, NC Tech has put a lot of work into their Street View camera. And then we're even seeing the, Go the GoPro Fusion is now down to like $299 on Amazon. And when you combine that with, uh, with a tool called Trailblazer for Panoskin, you can actually upload using the GoPro Fusion camera, upload that kind of driving, walking, hiking, biking street view. So that's becoming quite a lot more accessible. It used to be you know, many thousands of dollars and, and is already in, in a 18 months or two year span coming down to just a couple of uh, $100 to be able to do that. Second technology I wanted to talk about was uh, maps. And so maps, of course, the ubiquitous tool that everyone uses. I actually read an article the other day that uh, Maps is one of, I think, five different um, tools that Google has that have passed a billion users. So that's a billion with a B users who are using Google Maps to figure out where to go and what to do. And if you haven't been paying attention to what's going on there, the, the Explore panel, which comes up at the bottom when you do a search for, for uh, really wherever you are, you'll have that Explore panel at the bottom. And part of that really is you know restaurants and, and hotels and things that you're sort of used to. But if you keep scrolling in there, there's a whole bunch of destination information that is starting to be surfaced inside these products. And so just very quickly going over what some of those are, you can look at top sites for your destination. That's actually based on visits from people's phones. So it's kind of surfacing those things. These are the places that people typically go in that destination. Events, the, if ever there was a, a, a strong reason to make sure that you are using structured data and the proper schema markup for your events, this is one of them. So it's going to surface all of those different events inside the, the Maps product. Again, you know, a billion users, right? So uh, definitely a good reason to make sure that you have all of your structured data for your events tuned up because it will not only show up in search, it will also show up here in the Maps app. And then this is an interesting one that, that we've been paying attention to. We actually did uh, help with a, a little A-B test in, in this earlier in the year with one of the Google Teams. Um, there's a lists component that is being pulled into maps here. So these are maps that are lists that anyone can make. You can see that this one was submitted by a local guide here. Uh, and you just put together these different uh, places that make sense in your destination. So this feels like a really good opportunity for DMOs to contribute uh, like itinerary content by going into maps, using their local guides or, or just a user account in uh, Google and building some lists that can be surfaced in, uh, in, in Maps Explore and in other kinds of uh, places. And then lastly, I just wanted to mention one of the other cool things is kind of what people are talking about with the Google Maps app is the AR walking directions. And if you haven't seen that, it uh, overlays these big blue arrows and, and uh, descriptions and stuff on the roads where you're supposed to turn and where you're supposed to go. Um, that was rolled out originally for uh, local guides. Um, and then just recently, beginning of the month here, it was rolled out for all Pixel owners. And uh, I presume in the next couple of months, you'll see that on all the rest of the phones. So keep an eye out for that. Some pretty interesting things going on with uh, AR. And